This is Twit. Yeah, we had an interesting case. Now, let's all admit that practically no one in the insurance industry, in the security industry, in the law enforcement world recommends paying the ransom for ransomware. There, there are just a whole ton of reasons why it's a bad idea. But none of those reasons stopped the leaders of Riviera Beach, Florida, which is a, a small little town of 35,000 people or so, just on the north side of West Palm Beach, from authorizing a payment of 65 bitcoins, uh, which on the day they did it was worth somewhere in around $600,000, to criminals in the hope that a ransomware attack against the city would be backed off and they would get the unencryption keys uh, so that they could regain access to their data. Now, this attack began on May 29th when a police department employee opened a malicious email attachment and the havoc began to spread. It ended up taking off systems that included the city's email, uh, a water utility pumping station, some of the city's phones, the ability to accept utility payments online, the ability to accept any payments by credit card. Now, the, the city has tried to do a number of things. They authorized moving expenditure of about $900,000 up from next year where it was planned to this year so that they could replace uh, the damaged and infected hardware. They have gone through and had their own forensic experts, outside experts working on this. Um, and so the question is, why did they do it? And we don't know very much about that because there's not a whole lot of record about the conversation that went on in the meeting where that payment was was authorized. Um, there's no question that this has been an expensive year for municipalities having to deal with ransomware. In the past 12 to 18 months, we've seen a number of different cities, including Baltimore and Atlanta, have to deal with this. And in, the, uh, you know, in both of those cases, the, the cost uh, ended up being millions and millions of dollars, even though neither of them, to our knowledge, actually paid a ransom. One of the things that people warn about when it comes to this ransomware payment is that it can encourage criminals to see ransomware as an effective revenue-generating strategy. Over the past 24 months or so, we've actually seen the number of ransomware cases going down because so many companies have just a flat policy of not paying the ransom regardless. What that's done, though, is renew the criminal's attention on organizations that have fewer luxuries when it comes to their principles, municipal governments, healthcare organizations, Organizations and companies where there really are some major, perhaps literal life and death consequences of not getting their data back. So I want to bring my co-hosts in. And Bam, I'm going to turn to you first. When should uh, expediency overrule principle? Are, are there any sort of hard and fast rules that you can think of that say, okay, when this line has been crossed, it's okay to pay whatever the attackers want just to get the data back? Wow. That's, that's a really tough question, Kurt. Um, I, you know, really it's, it's, when it comes down to life and death things, I mean, we've seen it where, you know, whole hospital networks have been on the line um, where truly, you know, life support systems could be taken offline if ransom weren't paid. Uh, these are, you know, I, issues where, where you certainly um, are, are looking at, you know, uh, uh, true life and death scenarios. 
However, there's other, you know, areas that are a lot grayer, right? I mean, take a municipality like you described or even a small business who um, might go under if they don't pay their, their ransom. And, you know, I was actually in this position in a past life where, you know, we were – we were we were DDoS ransom, right? Not ransomware the the way it w- way it's uh, rolled out today via malware and, and data encryption or corruption, um, but uh, you know DDoS uh, botnets pointed at uh, pl- revenue generating platforms with attackers you know demanding a certain amount of money wired into an offshore account uh, unless. Uh, you know, and, and if we didn't pay it, they would take us down. And and not coincidentally, those those ransoms were right in line with the emergency services from, say, a service provider or a DDoS scrubber. Uh, so these attackers tend to know what the the tolerance or threshold or what the 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 risk benefit analysis goes for anyone who's you know operating on a system that that they're uh, attending to a, a attack so i don't know if there's a, a hard and fast rule because you know if i'm a small business owner i'm getting off the ground and i, I haven't done the right thing to secure my data um and the the attackers done their homework and they know what i have in the bank they're gonna you know ask for the, the requisite sum of money that um, is is while painful l- less than what uh, I would lose in terms of losing my whole business or something of that nature. So it's it's very difficult to provide a, a really a, like a rule of thumb that everyone can follow. Um, it, it's going to vary very much on a case by case basis, and um, you know we we should probably uh, uh, make backing up data a lot easier than we already have. And, and that's, that's probably my best, best advice for anybody is, is, you know, figure out a backup policy. Well, Brian, I'm, I'm going to stay with you because you do have some experience with this sort of thing. And as we say in the real world, how can it be that, that even a small city like Riviera beach doesn't have adequate backups for that matter? How can it be that a city like Atlanta, a city like Baltimore doesn't have backups that would make this much less of a problem. Is it the case that that backups, even under the best of circumstances, aren't going to protect us? Or is the lesson here that we really do need to have good backup mechanisms in place no matter what size our organization is? So my experience has taught me that backups are often um, either one, not as reliable as we'd like them to be, right? Uh, we, we go, you know, you if you're an IT organization of any size, you run a, um, a fire drill, so to speak, and and test your back and backup and restore, and you often find that you can never restore fully. Uh, two, backups often take a long time um, in terms of re- restoration of data. So, so those two factors, in just in my personal experience, often uh, may contribute to a willingness to pay a ransom. Right, uh, less than a hundred percent. Uh, uh, trust in your backups, uh, you know, when you're in this position of being ransom, you say, well, you know, you go to your IT staff and you say, all right, listen, do, do we feel like we are adequately backed up that we wouldn't have, to, we shouldn't pay this ransom? And they might get back an answer that they don't like that. Uh, yeah, the last time we ran a, a dry run of a backup and restore, you know, disaster recovery drill, it didn't go well. Or, um, the other answer is last time we ran this, it took us, you know, two days to get fully restored. Uh, that's, you know, maybe two days of revenue, two days of critical systems offline, whatever the case may be. So um, backups are, are a great strategy, uh, but only when they're actually usable in a crisis scenario. Well, I wish I could say that this will be the last time we have a chance to talk about something like this, but I have the strange feeling that we're going to have the opportunity to revisit these issues again. Uh, 